So, Paul, remember last week where did Peter go? For eight years, that, the last, the ending part of our lesson last week. Paul went to his hometown named Tarsus, right? Okay, so let, let's look at the map. So we learned that he was in Damascus, went to Jerusalem, and then he was, there was a plan to kill him, so they took him to Caesarea, which is the port city, and took him all the way to Tarsus. That's where Paul was for eight years. So you're wondering, well, what happened to other apostles, right? So the one of the main apostles is Peter, right? So let's see where Peter, what happened to Peter? Peter was actually in Jerusalem area and he was ministering right around that area. Now, he didn't go too far. Samaria and places like that where still you had some Jewish people, people who believed in God but actually did not know about Jesus. So he's staying in that area talking about Jesus so that other people might learn about him. So. So Peter is in the local area where Paul went to the foreign land, right? Like next slide. So one of the places that Peter went um, is Joppa. In Joppa, he met some uh, God-fearing people who didn't know about Jesus, so he wanted to go there to tell about Jesus. Even before Joppa, he kept, he kept going up north, north, and he was doing amazing healing amongst people. In Joppa, the Bible talks about, and if you read Acts chapter 9, it talks about a lady named Tabitha or Dorcas who died. But she, used, she was a very, very kind lady who used to always help out poor orphans and widows and making clothes for them. And when in Joppa, with this lady Dorcas, when she, when she died, Peter was called there to pray for her the dead person and you will see that um, she lived because Peter prayed for her in the name of Jesus Christ and she lived so people in Joppa that's a picture of Joppa now it's a historical place okay it's not a picture of back then but it's pretty much some of them are remains still I think there's another photo of Joppa it's a port city it's a ne near the water okay so that's what happened, and they wanted Peter to stay, and so he stayed in Joppa for a couple of days, right? And something strange happens, but we're gonna go back, go to the next slide and see. Now, so this is where, from Jerusalem, Peter stays in Joppa, and now we're gonna talk about a person who's living in Caesarea. Remember Paul was taken here and then taken on, got on a ship to go to Tarsus? In Caesarea, there was a guy named, yeah, so Caesarea, I'm gonna show you a picture of Caesarea a little bit. Yeah, that's Caesarea, that's the port city right there. And another picture, yeah, it looks something like that even now because they preserved the historical place. In Caesarea, there was a, man at that time, um, he, uh, he's a centurion. Do you know what centurion is? Cent, cent means 100, right? Uh, he's an army officer, Roman soldier, a command who's, who's commanding 100 people. So that's him, okay? And his name is Cornelius. Have you heard of Cornelius before his name? We learned about him before. So this Cornelius is a special man living in, in, in charge of the army of 100 people in Caesarea. He's well known in the Bible because he loved God. Even though he's a Roman soldier, he believed in God just like the Jewish people, right? Israelites. So the Bible says that he prayed all the time. He was extra good to the Jewish people. He wasn't harsh to them. He always giving. Um, uh, spending money to buy food and clothing for the poor people, the Jewish people, and helping them whenever they were in trouble. And the Bible says that he was a very kind man. Okay? And God saw that. God saw how good he was. And the next frame. So, the Bible says that when Cornelius was home, he was praying and he heard angel of God speak to him. An angel of God, this is a vision of an angel, angel of God, and says, Cornelius, 
of course, if you see the angel, right, you get scared. So he, he was so scared and shocked, and it's never happened to him before. Right? Have you ever seen angels speak to you before? One day you will. Or sometimes you see angel in, the, in a dream, or Jesus, Jesus in a dream, right? Um, and that, when that happens, it's an amazing experience. So he goes, what is it, Lord? And he's knelt, knelt down like that. And this is what the angel says, and that's in chapter 10, verse 4. It says, your prayers and your arm, elms, elms means the offering, okay? Your prayers and elms have taken up to the God, to God as an offering. Remember when you give offering to God? What do you give? You give money, right? But did you know that money is not the only offering you can give to God? Whenever you do some kind act, say some uh, encouraging words to people, or actually also spend your money and helping people who are uh, in need of your help, those are all, God considers them elms as, as an offering. So the Bible also says that whatever good you do to the poor people, it's same as you doing to Jesus, to God. And God saw all that. And so that's why the angel says, whatever good thing that you have done, it's been taken up to God as an offering. And so now God is going to reward you. Do you know that when you do kind acts and do good things, God will reward you? He will pay you back, right? So this is how God is going to do this. He says, now, send to Joppa. Where is, who's in Joppa now? Peter, right? But he's in, and Cornelius is in Caesarea. So the angel is saying, why don't you take some men, send some men to Joppa and find a man named Peter. He's staying at a house of a guy named Simon the Tanner. Tanner is a, is a job, like uh, people who clean like animal hides and make leather, right? Dries leathers. So he goes, he, Peter is staying at Simon ten, the Tanner's house. I want you to go uh, and send some people. Okay, and then the angel disappears. So Cornelius, like, he's like, wow, what's happening? So he, of course, has to obey. So he takes, the Bible says in verse 7, he called two of his devout, meaning faithful soldiers that he can trust, and he sends them. He says, go find this guy named Peter, fetch him, bring him back to me. Okay, that was the job. And now, so now what do you think Cornelius is doing? He's waiting, right? So a walk from jo uh, where he is all the way to Peter is about 22 miles, meaning you have to at least take like two days to get there. So he's waiting, he's cleaning the house and calling, he's telling all his family members to, that somebody special is coming to his house and getting all ready. Now let's see what Peter is doing at that time. So Peter is in Joppa. I found a picture of a house that has a flat roof during that Jesus time, maybe not exactly the same, um, but anyway, Peter is surely staying at Simon the Tanner's house. And the Bible says that he was, he went up on the roof, there's a, usually a staircase going up to the roof where people can relax and sometimes they take naps. So Peter went up, it's about 12 o'clock in noon time, and he's really, really hungry. But he's praying. He's waiting for the, for, the, the, for the lunch to be ready. The Bible says he's praying. And guess what happened? He falls into a trance. Meaning, you're like, do you know what falling in trance means? Like, you're not, you're like not really sleeping. Uh, you kind of awake. That, that state of mind. And he sees a vision. And the vision, in his vision, he sees something coming down from the sky. The whole heaven is opened up on a sheet with the two, four corners all, all tied up and whole, all kinds of strange animals on it comes down. So it's a vision. So he sees it and he goes, ooh, what is this? And when he saw it, they're all, because Peter also knows the Bible really well. You know, in the Bible, in the Old Testament, it talks about some food that you can eat, some food you shouldn't eat. And some of the uh, 
animals that you cannot eat, that God doesn't want you to eat, because God called them not clean, unclean food that you cannot eat, or something like what you see here, something like reptiles and snakes and uh, you see that turtle? You're not supposed to eat. You're not supposed to eat owl, rabbits. You're not supposed to eat bats, right? You see this alligator, right? And of the meats, you're not supposed to eat things like camels or pigs, right? So the Bible lists all kinds of things that you're not supposed to eat. And of the birds, you're not supposed to eat like vultures or falcons and things like that also. So he sees all these things, strange animals coming down and he's hungry, right? Uh, do you think he wants to eat them? No, because for the Jewish people, those are bad stuff. You're not supposed to eat it. But God tells him, right? In the Bible, he says, God tells him, get up, kill and eat. Right? And then, and then Peter goes, no. Oh God, no, are you testing me? Because I know I'm not supposed to eat them, right? Because uh, he says, I have never eaten anything so common or unclean. I'm not gonna eat it, God. He, I think he saw it as a test, right? To see how much he can obey the Bible or not. And then it, this thing goes up, back to the sky, to heaven, and then it comes down again. And the same thing, rise, Peter, get up, kill and eat. And he goes, no, I'm not gonna eat that. You told us not to eat that in the Bible, right? It's unclean. Goes back up and then comes back down again for the third time. Rise, Peter, kill and eat. And he goes, by no means, Lord, I have never eaten anything that is common or unclean. And that's what the Bible and God said to him. Actually, God did say a couple of times he says, what God has made clean, do not call common. What it means is like, well, these are all things that God made, right? They're all God's creatures. You cannot call them unclean. So, and then after that third time the, in the vision, this thing gets lifted up to heaven and it disappears. So Peter is really, really perplexed. The Bible says he was perplexed. Perplexed means he was very confused. What was that? Why am I seeing that weird vision? What was that all weird animals coming down? And why is God telling me to eat it? Right? So he's like curious. Guess what? Right at that instant, somebody's knocking at the gate of Simon the Tanner's house. And probably the owner opens up the door and here is, this is not Cornelius, Cornelius said, Two of his officers and another guy followed. The Bible says three came, right? And then they said, um, excuse me, does Peter um, live here? Because we came all the way from Caesarea looking for Peter. Um, we're supposed to take him to, with us to Joba. And then Peter, God tells Peter. So Peter's up on the roof and God tells Peter, go, follow him, right? Um, you need to go with him. So he comes down. And then Peter went to, to the guys and said, I am the one you're looking for. Why are you here? And then the guy says, um, Cornelius, a centurion, very upright, meaning very nice guy, righteous person, and he fears God. And everybody likes him, all the Jewish people like him. And the Holy Spirit and the angel told him to fetch you bring you to see what you have to say and so Peter invited them to the house and they stayed overnight and next day early in the morning they packed up Peter took some of his friends too and they all went down to uh, 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 went up to Caesarea okay so when they went Peter goes to uh, Cornelius's house in Caesarea and he's all waiting with his family members and relatives all waiting for him and then Cornelius kneels down and says uh, and wants to like worship him because if he's sent by he thinks he's sent by the angels right and here he, and Peter takes him and he says no he, Peter lifted him up verse 26 lifted him up and say stand up I'm only a man just like you don't worship me and then you know, I am a 
Jew, right? And he goes, this is what Peter said, I'm a Jew, and for a Jewish person, you're not supposed to go to some foreigner's house. If you're not a Jew, I'm not supposed to hang out with other people from other countries, other nations. Um, but God showed me through a vision that I shouldn't call anything, anybody who's not of my um, nationality or my culture or my country unclean because they're all God's creatures, right? So what is it? Why did you call me? And this is what Centurion says, you know, and he tells the same thing. Four days ago, it took four days. He says, four days ago, about this time, I was praying, and an angel appeared, and, and he says, uh, Cornelius, all the good things that you have done, God remembers it. And he told me to send people to get you, because you were in Joppa, and da 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 da, -da all this thing, right? And then Peter goes, now I know for sure that God is not partial. He's not prejudiced, but he cares and he loves everyone from every nation, those who love God, those who fear God, and does what is acceptable. So he realizes, Peter realizes, because remember when Jesus, when he was going up to heaven, he says, spread the God news of the good news of the gospel to ends of the earth. Jesus didn't say just tell people the Jewish people about Jesus. Jesus said to go to the ends of the earth, and I guess Peter didn't know it until then, when, until he saw the vision of all different kinds of animals, clean, I mean, those he thought was unclean, just because they're not, uh, they weren't um, the food that he was allowed to eat, but God, God says no, right? Everything that God made is clean, so he realizes God wants the gospel to go rest of the world to everyone do you feel the same way yeah nowadays we hear on the news about um, you know prejudice and racism things like that sometimes we are Christ uh, we are Christians and we are Asians we are sometimes prejudiced of people from different countries different skin color and sometimes the other race people feel the same way of people who are different from them Sometimes we have prejudice against people who are poor or don't have things like we do. Also towards people who are handicapped. So, but we must realize that God loves everyone, no matter what skin color they are, no matter what kind of handicap problems they have, whether they're rich or poor. In God's eyes, they're all the same. And also remember that God, the Bible says God's eyes are everywhere. Proverbs 15, 23, remember learning about that? It says the, the eyes of the Lord are everywhere, watching over the good and evil. So remember that God doesn't just look for your mistakes or the wrong things that you do so that they can punish you. Sometimes we think God is just God who judges and punish, punishes us all the time. But you must also remember that when you do good, when you do kind acts, just like said uh, Cornelius, God is watching you too. He loves to watch that when you're praying for somebody, when you're helping a, a kid who's being bullied, right? When you stand up for what is right, when you use your money to help people who are in need, send money to missionaries, whatever. And when you're helping out your parents, right, at home with your siblings, all those things are good acts that Jesus, God sees and he he actually sees that more than some of the wrongs that you do. Sometimes God, God is easy to forgive your sins, right? But God is really, really good at watching your good deeds so he can bless you. So remember that, okay? So, um, so Peter believes that, and what is the next frame? I forgot what the next, oh, so, okay. So maybe we should go back. We should go back there. So, um, now Peter is explaining about what all happened to him again, right? And while he's talking about it, he goes, now I know why I'm here. And now I know what I'm supposed to share with you. You all, have you heard about Jesus? And some of them did, some of them didn't. And you know Jesus is God's son. He, he came to die on the cross for our sins. People hated him and people did not believe that he is the son of God. But, um, uh, and they killed him and hung him on the cross, but after three days he lived again. 
and you must believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, who, the only one who can save us from our sins, the only one who can take us to heaven uh, and uh, so that we can live forever and ever with God, right? He says all these things, right? And then the Bible says, guys, verse 44, Acts chapter 10, it says, while, and he also says uh, that everyone who believes in him will be forgiven of their sins, right? And while he's speaking, guess what happens? The Holy Spirit fell on all of those people who heard, just like um, the Pentecost time when the people were, when who were praying at the upper room, Holy Spirit came like fire, right? Same thing happened. People were touched by the power of the Holy Spirit and they were speaking in tongues, just like before. And when, when Peter saw that, he was even more surprised. Look, God is giving Holy Spirit to these people and they're not even baptized yet. So right at that instant, Peter goes, who's gonna stop you from being baptized right now? Right? So what they did was they, they put Peter, um, took all of them to be baptized. And remember, uh, Caesarea is right near the water, so I'm sure he took all of them to the water, just like we do in, in our church too, in our church picnic, remember when we go to uh, Ala Moana and have people get be baptized at the beach? Same thing, they baptized them in, in the beach in Caesarea, and everyone received the Holy Spirit and was baptized. And those people asked, Peter to stay a couple more days and teach them more about Jesus. Okay, so that's a very um, amazing thing that had happened to Peter, and that's when God really taught Peter. Look, I want, I don't want you to stay just in near the Jewish people. I want you to go out and spread the gospel. And because of him, thank you. Because of him, other disciples did the same thing. Thomas and all the other disciples went to the rest of the world. Um, there's a saying that Thomas went all the way to India, guys. So we don't, I don't know where the other disciples went, but because of this amazing vision that God gave to Cornelius, and, and the, when Peter, remember Paul in Tarsus, later on you'll see Paul goes to different, like, to different places, right? Greece, and not just Rome, but Later on, he may even go to Spain. So that's how the gospel spread. And guess what? We living in Korea, me, I was living in Korea, and people living in all the rest of the world learned about Jesus. Okay? And that's our, and that's 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 what Jesus wants us from uh, wants uh, from us even now. Okay? He wants us to spread the good news of gospel. Okay, start from your family, your friends, or so because um, God wants you to, to do the same thing, right? When you get older, you might want to go to different countries, but right now I want you to pray for your family members who don't know Jesus, okay? And, and, and I, I pray that God will give you the boldness, meaning the brave heart, to talk about Jesus to whoever you meet, okay? I'm looking for that song, I don't know where I left it, here it is. We sang this song before, but we're gonna sing it one more time, okay? What about my neighbor? This is one of my favorite songs, so we're gonna, I know you know this song already, so can you sing with me? Okay, ready, go. Someone has taught me God's precious word. Jesus loves me, this new cyber. I received him who saves from sin. And I know he lives within. But what about my neighbor? What about my friend? What about my family? Who will tell them? So many people across the sea have never heard of salvation free. Missionaries are called by God, and I'll help them spread the word. But what about my neighbor? What about my friend? What about my family? Who will tell them? In the last line, I will tell them. Okay.
we're going to go to the memory verse. We're going to skip over to the memory verse part. OK, that's, uh, so memory verse today is first Timothy. Hello, Timothy. I know we have two Timothys in our church in our Sunday school. First Timothy chapter 2, verse 4. What does it say? OK, I'm going to, this one actually says who, who meaning God. So because I'm only going to do part of, part of the verse. We're going to say, God wants all people to be saved and to come to a knowledge of the truth. That's what God wants. He wants everybody to know about Jesus. Okay? He wants everybody to know the truth. Okay? Remember that. All right. So we're going to say it two times, and then we're going to uh, erase a word, and you have to do that. Okay? You have to guess what that word is. Okay, let's, let's go. God wants all people to be saved and to come to a knowledge of the truth. 1 Timothy 2, 4. One more time. Can you remember? Okay. God wants all people to be saved and to come to a knowledge of the truth. 1 Timothy 2, 4. Can I take a word out? Okay, I'm going to take out saint. And teacher David is going to take that word out. Okay. Yeah, that's good. Thank you. All right, and I'm going to take out truth. Okay. What is this word again? What is that word again? Saint. This is true. Got it? All right, let's say it. First Timothy 2, 4. God wants all people to be saved and to come to a knowledge of the truth. truth. Got it? All right. Okay, we're going to check out two more words. Mm, people and knowledge. Is it hard, guys? Okay, people and knowledge. I didn't know how to do that blackout thing. All right. All right, great. Thank you, teacher. Day. Okay, ready to go? First Timothy 2, 4. That's easy. Two times two is four. Okay, ready to go? God wants all people to be saved to and to come to a knowledge of the truth. I hope I don't think <laughs> All right. I'm going to just take out once and come. And then that will be it. Once and come and Timothy. Once come and Timothy. Okay. So we're going to start while well, teacher works on that one. Ready? Go. First Timothy 2.4. God wants all people to be saved and to come to a knowledge of the truth. First Timothy 2, 4. Okay, now I'm just going to stroke my hand, finger across it and we're not going to say it, you say it. Okay, ready, go. together. Ready, go. First Timothy 2, 4. God wants all people to be saved and to come to a knowledge of the truth. First Timothy 2, 4. Okay. Let's quickly pray. Dear Jesus, we learn about the centurion, even though he was a Roman um, commander in the army. Lord, you chose him. You chose him as an instrument um, to teach Peter that God loves all and God wants everybody to come to a, a knowledge of the truth, which is Jesus Christ. Um, we, 
we know that you chose him especially because he was a good person. He helped other people. Everything good that he did was like an offering that was taken up to God. And that also encourages us too, Lord, uh, knowing that God, you're not God who just judges and punishes people for doing wrong, but you're a God who sees people doing good things, even in secret, and you want to bless them. And we thank you that you are such a good God, oh Lord. Um, and also we thank you for teaching Peter uh, that you love everybody from all race, no matter what kind of condition they're, they're in. And we are thankful that so many people obeyed and so many people have gone to the corners of the earth teaching about Jesus. And now we have so many believers. But there are so many other people who don't know about you, Lord. So help us to do that work. And we pray that you will bless all the missionaries in different uh, parts of the world. Help them to do, your jo do their job well. And help us to do our job well, even uh, while we are living at our home. We thank you, Lord. Uh, bless everyone who are at home. And keep them safe for another week, oh Lord. And help us to remember you every day. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, uh, we're going to sing the last song, right? All right. Everybody together ready. Go. Uh, Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day. But deliver us from evil, for thine is 